Welcome back. This is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today is the last part of our dysglycemia series. Over the last several weeks, we went over different um, syndromes related to blood sugar, hypoglycemia, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, type 1.5 diabetes. Today, we're going to talk about the clinical management of autoimmune diabetes. So when we look at patients who come in, we have to uh, first distinguish in what category do they fit in terms of their diabetic condition. So today we're going to talk about autoimmune diabetes or LADA, which is latent autoimmune diabetes um, that comes on in adulthood, right? It's called type 1.5. For those patients, we have to check antibodies. Do we have an immune process that is attacking tissue in our body, causing the diabetes. GAD65 antibody, right? You have islet cell antibodies, and then you have zinc transport antibodies. When we check for patients, approximately 68% of those patients who have autoimmune processes, or this condition right here, will have uh, this antibody. 72% will have the ILA cell antibody, and 62% will have the zinc transport antibody. So it's very important to manage patients clinically in the proper way by checking for the antibodies, because it might not be just less carbohydrates and more exercise. You might have to find those triggers that cause autoimmune disease. So when we have patients like uh, who's relatively thin, who looks like they're in shape, um, they exercise, they eat well relatively, yet their blood sugar is high. You have to start suspecting uh, adult onset autoimmune diabetes, type 1.5, okay? So we go ahead and we'll check these antibodies to see if there's any of these will be positive. Then we can categorize somebody uh, in the proper uh, section so you can treat those patients appropriately. So for autoimmune disease or autoimmune diabetes, you have to be able to find the triggers, right? You want to remove the triggers that cause the inflammatory or immune response uh, um, that can cause autoimmune disease for these patients. So food, food is an important factor, right? Because it can cross react. So if you look at, let's say gluten, there's certain uh, uh, peptides in there, right? which will look like pancreatic tissue or islet cell antibodies, right? Or islet cell uh, tissue. So food is very important. Things like gluten, dairy, soy, lectins, etc. Okay. Chemical factors, BPA, right? Or dry cleaning chemicals. Right? You have to be able to understand what kind of immune response you're having to these types of stuff in order to figure out how to help a patient. Stress. Stress is a very important factor. Stress in itself can trigger autoimmune disease. Um, the other one is infection. Do we have any viruses? Do we have any bacterial infections? Do we have any mold? Right? Knowing the environmental triggers, knowing what type of infection you might have, is crucial in helping patients who have autoimmune diabetes. Without it, it's very difficult to treat because you can't just say, go exercise and eat less carbs when you have an autoimmune patient. Like I said, when you have someone who has adult onset uh, autoimmune disease, diabetes, uh, they're relatively thin. They look like they're healthy, yet they have high blood sugar. So it's a matter of finding the triggers and then eliminating them, followed by the other strategies of managing type 2 diabetes, right? Things like fasting, things like uh, ketogenic diets. In our previous videos, we also talked about nutrients that can be quite helpful. What nutrients would be helpful for autoimmune disease, right? Things like glutathione, vitamin D, vitamin A, uh, essential fats, right? EPA, DHA. You have to be able to combine the nutraceutical portion, diet and lifestyle, and then manage or find the triggers that stimulate our immune system 
uh, for autoimmune disease. Okay, so it's very important to do that. Okay, in the following weeks after this, we're going to go into the topic of infertility. It's a very important topic because there are so many people who have uh, issues getting pregnant, right? Sometimes it's a female issue, sometimes it's a male issue, but I think infertility may be a very important topic for many couples out there trying to conceive. So stay tuned, in the next several weeks, we're gonna go over infertility. And if you have any questions, leave it in the uh, section below and ask questions about infertility. And I'll make sure to cover those types of uh, topics over the next several weeks. Go ahead and share and like the page, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.